Alright, hello everyone, my name is Shep, welcome back to the Butcher Circus. Today we have a very interesting team that we are going to be playing against. We are playing against Epic Stem, this is the first time we're playing against them. And uh, we're going to be doing a couple matches, and they said that they're going to play their best team, and this looks like it's it. Is it a triple repulse team with a Crusader? It's definitely a very interesting setup, and I think I'm gonna start by disrupting it. So I'm gonna pull this man at arms and prevent that abomination from getting off a slam or getting off a beast pile. He can still transform, but he's not gonna be quite as potent as he would be otherwise. So very interesting team by my opponent. And what do we have here? Well, we're playing um, something like like what we were witnessing yesterday, like something like heavy prot and trying to beat mark teams. Because I had no idea what I was gonna play against. I've never played against Extem against Epic Stem. I don't know what they like to play, so I just decided, ah, you know what, let's bring something that is going to have, a, overall, a good time against a lot of teams. And, uh, you know, you have Flatron, so a good time against Stress, and you have a lot of protection with the Crusader, you have Man at Arms for the Battle of the Debuff, so we could pretty handily destroy, uh, pretty handily destroy the damage teams with also having the Reclaim, the Heal, the Guards, the Bellows, the, the Disruption from the Occultists, so overall, like, really good against damage, and also good against stress, because, you know, we have a flagellant, we have a bolster, and we also have a very good stress artillery in the form of this little occultist. So right now, I think this is 100% a uh, bolster turn, you know, we have the Bulwark of Light and we have the bolster. You might be wondering, why did you Bulwark of Light if there's gonna be mostly stress on the opponent's side? Well, there's also going to be repast, especially with the Higher Man. Higher Man also does some very decent damage with the Duelist Advance and the Grape Shot Blast. And uh, the Crusader does also have Zealous for the damage and uh, and stuns. So I think going Block of Light, you just can't go wrong with the 20% protection, honestly. I think having that is uh, overall going to be very, very good for us. So, the Crusader, he can also go Block of Light, but I don't think it's going to be quite as good for him as it is for us. Because uh, our offense, in terms of damage numbers, is really only the Crusader with his uh, with his Zealous Accusations. And, you know, say goodbye to that, Shepherd Doggy. <laughs> say goodbye to that. I could just go for the immediate Abyssal Artillery, which uh, is indeed an idea. And I think I'm going to go for it, so... Let's do some nasty stress to that backline and start stacking it up. So our offense isn't great playing a team like this, let's be honest. It's only the Abyssal Artillery that's really disrupting and uh, destroying my opponent. I don't have any Abomination to go Transform Slam, I don't have uh, stuns, I don't have Beast Pile, I don't have a lot of DOT, I only have the Flagellant for that. And even with the Flagellant I have a very defensive DOT idea, I have just Punish, I don't have Reign of Sorrows, I, I have Reclaim. So yeah, overall, we're not going to have the best time against that. So that buff, that's a lot of plus damage on the Abomination. I'm not too sure if I want to punish him uh, after that. But one good thing about my opponent's side is that there's barely any healing. That is a really good thing for us because the only healing that my opponent really has here is the Rally to the Flame to, from the Crusader. So overall, we're going to have a pretty good time in the late game, I'm going to have to say. Because we also have Weird Reconstruction. I could have brought Stygian Embrace, but I decided on Weird Reconstruction this time around. Because I felt like it would be better for the Occultus heal himself. Like, the other characters really aren't in danger, even against Smart Teams. So, if the Occultus is healing himself, I think we're overall going to have a better time. And that's exactly what I went for. I could punish the Abomination here, but I think that's a little bit unnecessary. I'm just going to try punishing the Crusader. We do not have the Spiked Bat. Instead, we have the Crimson Hook, so we have less of a bleed chance. We have a 45% chance of getting it each time. But we also have a little bit more crit, so hopefully we would get it. But it looks like we're not going to be quite as lucky just yet. So yeah, this match is looking pretty neck and neck so far, I'm going to have to say. But the Abyssal Artillery is going to be a massive boon for us. I'm a little bit surprised uh, Stem didn't go for a Duelist Advance there on the Crusader or something. Because now I'm going to get another Abyssal Artillery onto that backline. And I'm pretty happy about it. So here we go for another Abyssal Artillery. Sadly, no crits. It has very decent crit chance. So I would love, uh, very much love and appreciate some crits here. But oh well. The Flagellant is definitely going to get afflicted this match, even with Content of Absolution and the Bolster. He's taking damage from Grape Shot, he's taking damage from Zealous Accusation, there's a Transformation, so with the amount of uh, uh, stress that there's being output, I really can't uh, just prevent afflictions here. It's going to be very, very difficult to do that. If I had the um, Inspiring Cry, I could do that, but I don't have Inspiring Cry, so you can forget about that. 
I'm just gonna drop another Bellow here. I think I can kind of wait this out. And one advantage that I do have is that my Fadron can eventually just shop a Redeem, and I'll be back to a pretty relatively stable position. Sadly, my Crusader doesn't have Strength Seals. If he did have Strength Seals, if I had like a full Strength Seal Crusader here with like Pit Fighter's Helm, Gorgeous Banner, and instead of having Holy Lance, I had Inspiring Cry, like I think I would have won this match on the spot. But since I don't have that, then we're gonna have a couple more difficulties. I'm gonna go for a little bit of an interesting play here. I'm gonna go for Zealous because I'm only gonna eat five stress in return from that V Smile, so it's not uh, not too bad for me. So yeah, we do that. We're doing a lot of stress to both my uh, to both the enemy characters, and the backline is also eating a lot of horror. I do need to get that Man at Arms uh, afflicted, though, or else he's just gonna, uh, or else he's not gonna be penalized a lot for. We're being at 93 stress, and I wish he, he would be penalized for that. So I might drop to this store here, after the A-bomb goes for his action, but I'm not overly preoccupied about that. I'm gonna drop another punish, hopefully get the bleed this time. Okay, we do get the bleed this time, which is really good. We don't get the extra stress, because the punish and the Crimson Hook uh, synergy with the stress dealt versus bleeding doesn't really work quite well. It works better with Train of Sorrows, like, you apply the bleed and then you apply the stress, when you go for Punish, you apply the Stress first and then you apply the Bleed, so you don't make use of that extra plus Stress dealt well, as you get the Bleed. You only get it, like, for example, next turn. So he's actually gonna go Beast File, which is a little bit surprising, not gonna lie, that he does actually decide on the Beast File. And my Man at Arms is gonna go Abusive, which is pretty bad, <laughs> because now I can stun other characters. And, of course, I do not enjoy that one bit. But let's hopefully not stun other characters, right? Um, that's just stress. I mean, just stress is still pretty bad, but yeah, we are gonna get an enemy Man at Arms afflicted, we're gonna reduce damage even further, and the enemy uh, Iron Man is also gonna get afflicted. Surprisingly, the enemy Man at Arms does not have Ulcer. It's a very interesting team that Stem has here, I will have to say. Very, very interesting. Having Shield Spike while being in position 4. Not gonna lie, that is quite uh, the interesting setup. It's still working because Bitfighter's Helmet Bellow is still doing relatively okay. As well as the alt command buff is really helping here, but now there's going to be a slam. I'm quite likely to get pushed to the back. Yeah, there you go. And I think that right now I could just drop a heal with the Crusader, but I kind of want my Zealous. So I'm just going to click and I'm going to go for a heal with, uh, uh, with the Redeem. And I think this is fine for me. After this, I get to drop a Zealous. I get to drop another Vessel Artillery. The enemy backline is eating a lot of stress. Especially because there's no bed, there's no bolster, there's no anti-stress trinkets. The Harman is even taking more stress than what he would be uh, because of that Crim Bandana. And the Zealous is going to come in unopposed because there will be no um, no repost, so that's pretty nice. Although I will say, yeah, I'm going to get stunned, so that's not very nice. But at least the stun is not a Zealous, so it's not the end of the world for me. I could just pass immediately, and I will. I will just pass immediately, and then I'll see what I want to do after that. I think we have a Bianca interference today in the video. Yep, yes we do. She's angry. She's angry at someone. Maybe someone's coming home. <laughs> I'm not sure. She is very, very angry right now. And this is um, this is a clear... I think this is a clear pull on the Man at Arms. I think this is a pretty clear pull on the Man at Arms. Because Crusader doesn't have Holy Lance, right? And um, I don't want to drop a bit of artillery right now because it's going to waste a lot of stress on Hyman. There's no world where I do 16 unless I get a crit. And getting a pull on the Man at Arms makes it so the Hyman only has Duelist Advance. And if he goes Duelist Advance, Crusader goes to position 4, and the Crusader doesn't even have Holy Lance. Even if he had Holy Lance, this would be a good play, because Holy Lance isn't even near as good as Stunning Blow and the Zealous Accusation. So overall, this isn't looking too good for, for Stem here. It is not looking too good for his team at all. So he's gonna go Duelist Advance on the random character, uh, goes for my Flash ones, which is actually pretty good, because that's gonna delay the affliction by quite a bit. And now I can drop a Zealous Accusation here, which I will, just to get that uh, Abomination Afflicted ASAP. It's not gonna get him afflicted, but he will afflict after a Bellow, or after... Actually, no, he is gonna afflict because the Man Arms did some extra stress on everyone, so that is rather nice that happens. And the uh, Abomination goes irrational, which is one of the worst things you could have possibly had. So yeah, this match isn't looking too good for Stem, especially considering no Virtue Chance and the Crusader being disrupted. Already two transformations down. My Flash Bond is still overall fine, considering that I still have three excitement I still have one more team. 
I still have content of absolution, and I'm not quite getting afflicted. Uh, I will, I will get afflicted even because of that horror. Because there's going to be like another grape shot. There's, there might be another zealous eventually, maybe be spile, and all oh, that sucks. <laughs> immediate, that's not an immediate fearful pass, but it's almost an immediate fearful pass, and that's really bad. There's minus a lot of damage on this higher man, but I'm going to make it even minus more, minus more. Good, good English shepherd. And I'm gonna drop another bell just to make sure that the repost doesn't hurt me uh, very much because I do want to drop a um, an abyss artillery here. The abyss artillery is gonna make the crusader reflected as well. So I think this match was really just um, a problem of the repost. Despite there being three of them, they didn't really do very much. You know, I have kind of a very modern stress team here. I have a stress team with Flagellant and Occultist, so you can kind of ignore a lot of that repulse action and just uh, have a really good time here with the Occultist, just spamming that Abyssal Artillery. And of course, against Abyssal Artillery, it is very difficult to hold your defense together. Very, very difficult. And against the Flagellant, it's also very difficult to just take him out, unlike it is the Crusader. Like, my Crusader is essentially dead in, like, two turns. Not two turns, like, two actions and he might be dead. That, that might be happening here. But the Flagellant, he's still alive and well. He's just chilling. He's absolutely chilling. I'm just gonna move forward here. Crusader says no. So instead, I'll just move forward one. For the punishes, I don't really mind all that much. And uh, the Rational is probably gonna stun my Crusader, I'd say. I'm not gonna give him any chances of stunning the Occultists, even if he wanted to do that, of course. Manacles doesn't reach position 4. If it did, uh, it would be really broken. I mean, it's already broken that it can reach position 3. I think it's already pretty broken. That is good. That is really good, because now he actually had a way of dealing stress, and my Crusader just had a heart attack there, which means I'm gonna have a really hard time uh, healing him and keeping him alive. I think I'm just gonna give up on him, because I don't really think there's any world where this uh, Crusader survives, sadly. It is indeed a sadly, but I don't think the Crusader is going to live for very much longer, so I'm just going to click here and I'm going to go for another Bellow. I'm not sure if I'm doing enough stress here. Actually, I am, because there's no bolster and I do have that Pit Fighter's Helm. So the Man at Arms is going to have the first heart attack of the match. No, actually, the first heart attack was on my Crusader. <laughs> Believe it or not, the Crusader was the first one to actually have a heart attack here. And the Man at Arms is taking 18 plus 33%. Uh, he's gone. Yeah, he's gone. I do believe he has gone to that stress, so unless you want to go for a heal, and after you go for a heal, I just drop a punish. So I think this uh, Menorums is not going to survive for very long. This Abomination is relatively useless right now, because all he can do in position on is Manacles, and Manacles pretty much stress heals my Flagellant at this point, so I'm really not preoccupied about that. There's just going to be an interesting play there, and um, yeah, this is a pretty obvious this artillery again. Thankfully I don't have to go command. I haven't been having to go command because there really isn't a lot of dodge on my opponent's side. But as I say that, uh, I, I, get, I get an awesome selfish act out. Instead of going for the game-winning Abyss artillery, which would pretty much kill the Crusader in a couple rounds and uh, kill the Men-at-Arms, I go for the funny <laughs> heal for 20 on myself. I somehow resist the bleed. That's definitely a somehow moment, but yeah. Now the Menorums is going to stay alive for a lot longer, which is annoying, but oh well, what can I do? I'm just going to click here with the Crusader. I don't think going for a Reclaim would really change a lot. The Crusader is just gone. At this point, you, just, you kind of just have to give up on him. And yeah, it's going to be a little bit difficult for me to clutch things out, because Silly Occultist doesn't want to be the MVP today, I guess. That's going to be a move back. That's actually pretty good for you, because now Bello is, uh, you know, it's still as good as it is in position 3. But that also means that um, now he, the Crusader is closer to being actually useful. So there goes the Raptures with the last tick of Distress, actually almost the last tick of Distress. And now I could just drop a Punish onto this uh, Higher Man. Do I drop a Punish on the Higher Man? Yes, I do. So I'm going to get a crit on it, he's going to heal my Stress, which is really good. And he's going to have a Heart Attack, which is also really good. The Crusader is dead regardless, so... That doesn't really change too much, but the extra stress from the Abomination makes it so the bell right now comes with a, an immediate death blow. And thankfully, Abusive can't pass, Abusive can't do any silly actions. All Abusive can do is, you know, that. And uh, hit other characters, but I'm really not preoccupied about that. So say goodbye to your higher man. Man-at-Arms is gonna have 
another heart attack, or maybe it was the first heart attack, I'm not too sure. Yeah, these characters aren't looking too good. <laughs> They're not looking too good, not gonna lie. I can't really go for Demon Spawn on the Mana Rams anymore, because uh, that means that the Crusader just gets closer into his position. Actually, you'd stay in place if I do go for a pull on the Mana Rams, because the corpse is gonna go away, right? So yeah, Mana Rams would go to position 2, and uh, the Crusader would just stay in 3. So he says he's invincible and moves forward with Masochistic. Well, I guess that's why you like Masochistic. It's one of the best afflictions. Masochistic and Abusive, they're both really good, especially Masochistic. I mean, it's just moved him forward right there. Crit heal for 16. God damn, that is, that is nasty. That is really nasty. Well, I guess I'm gonna go for... Well, the Occultist de declined. He declined my action. Can I lose this, is the question. Can I actually lose this? I think there's a chance. It is it is small, but there is definitely a chance now with my occultist passing twice, because the flagellant might eat a zealous or you know really big zealous or something like that. He might just oof himself and that's that, that would really be terrible here. If the flagellant somehow manages to oof himself. The the Man Arms is in a really rough spot too, because he doesn't have the numb against him, so he's been eating way more stress than what he would be otherwise. I'm gonna go for a punish on this Crusader, I do get to bleed, which is nice. Again, no stress, the Crimson Hook punish just doesn't work very well, but yeah. And now the Abomination can go for something. I could have dropped a Redeem there, wow, 25% death blow. I don't think the, the game wants me to win, but I'm gonna win anyway, because I have Flagellant. I do not care, I'm gonna win anyway, believe it or not. I really do not care about what's going on right now. I'm gonna click here, Rapturous can't really do too many bad things, and I'm gonna drop a Punish onto this Crusader, so he's dead from the stress and the horror. So say goodbye to your Crusader, there's a little bit of justice in this world, and after that the Flash is just too strong. I will be honest, this uh, Retribution Man at Arms could be a little bit of a hassle because of the Shield Spike. He can take out my Flash Vault unlike Bell Man at Arms. Bell Man at Arms is useless against Flash Vault at the, at the end of the match. Unless you guard your other characters and then you just become like a damage sponge for for the Flash Vaults. But yeah, unless you do something like that, you are going to be pretty much useless. So you can definitely say goodbye to your Crusader. The only way you can save him is if, um, you know, the Man Arms already did stress, and now Irrational needs to do even more stress and make the Crusader have a heart attack. That's the only way you can save him. I go for a pull, so a third act out in a row. This one wasn't as bad, it was a relatively decent act out. Going for the pull there, not really what I wanted to do anyway, but uh, it's not the end of the world. Now the Abomination, you're gonna see the stun chances of 45%, and it, it's going to heal my stress, so overall, dealing with Abomination is uh, pretty, pretty easy when you're a Flagellant. Of course, Beast Spell is a little bit more tricky uh, than that, but it won't be too hard to deal with because I can just kill the Man at Arms and be done with it. So yeah, I'm going to do that, I'm going to drop a Weakening Curse, the Man at Arms is going to die, and even if the Weakening Curse doesn't crit, um, eventually the Abomination is going to go to position 1, he's not going to have to repulse from Beast Spell. Even if he goes Beast Spell right now, he hits corpses. And after I kill this Man at Arms, I could always just pull the Crusader Corpse, and after that, the Abomination is going to be stuck in position 1 against 3 Examinates 1 Redeem, and there's literally no way you can win this. So I didn't really have the best team to deal with stress, uh, because... You know, no abomination is really sad, and the Crusader wasn't really an anti-stress Crusader, it was an anti-damage Crusader. But even then, it still worked out relatively okay for us. That's really not gonna save you. Uh, wow, okay, Occultist actually went for the correct act out, so that's four act outs in a row from Selfish. If you didn't think Selfish is one of the worst afflictions, then there you go. At least he's going for decent act outs this time. I mean, I haven't been playing with the Occultist for half the match. Literally half the match. I haven't been playing with the occultist. He's just been doing his own thing. It is uh, very interesting uh, The abomination went for an act out there, and I'm just gonna do this I get a very nice crit the crimson hook is definitely working this time around. <laughs> it is finally getting those Dastardly crits. It has a very decent crit chance with the punish uh, The flagellant is kind of renowned for getting those nice uh, nice hits and I think the abomination here is gonna stall He's really gonna stall. Well, that's that's really not going to change much. Yeah, see, I I've been, I haven't been playing with the Occultist for half the match. That's five act outs in a row. <laughs> Just two of them were passes. One of them was essentially a pass. 
And, uh, yeah, it's it's funny, isn't it? It is quite funny. Well, I don't think you can do that much damage with the repost, especially if I keep critting with the flash one, goddamn. And yeah, you can say goodbye to your abomination now after the weakening curse. Do I get six act outs in a row? Let's see. Finally, no act out. Finally, for the finishing ability, you know, the one that was already confirmed to uh, kill. So yeah, GGs. We're gonna take match number one. Let's go on for a match number two. All right, and here we go on to a match number two, and we have another very interesting team by Stem here. So. It looks like um, a damage team for sure, with a repost man at arms, with a finisher arbalist, so that's literally the exact same as we have, and with a stun crusader, which is uh, to be expected, <laughs> I guess, and an abomination with kind of a general setup. So, very interesting uh, setup that my opponent has here. Now, I'm gonna go for a little bit of a risk, and the risk doesn't pay off, very sadly, but you know, I kind of just felt like I had to go for it, so. We are playing the Goliath comp version like 3.0 or something. So we have a Grave Robber instead of a Jester. You might be wondering, well, Shep, why would you bring a Grave Robber? Um, <laughs> Stem says, wanna bet if I get if I till gets the 10% move. Um, I'm gonna say sure. I'm gonna say sure. He's gonna he's gonna try slamming my my leper, is it? Well it's not a 10%, there's extra 15, so it would be a 25% move chance on the slam. 40 if it's a crit. Oh, that damage. Ow. Okay, that does hurt, but we came prepared. Do not fret. We came prepared. We have Shadow Fate. So why do we not have a Jester? Well, we don't have a Jester because... It's not because we don't need the accuracy. It's not because we don't like Finale. It's because we were hoping of, um, of having a Grave Robber, and in case the Jester would get pulled, which is which is what normally happens, and it's really bad, in, instead of that happening, the Grave Robber just goes Shadow Fade after the pull, and you overall have a pretty decent time. Now, am I going to have a decent time here? I don't think so, because my Leper just got slammed. I failed at the 80% stun. I'm overall having a really rough time so far. <laughs> But I will hopefully be able to turn it around. Now, I am dropping a revenge, which is going to make it so I take plus damage. And there's a sniper shot inbound with piercing quarrel. So if it crits, it's probably going to do like something like 33 damage on it. Maybe maybe not that much, maybe like a 30. But yeah, it's 100% going to hurt. So it's going to be a stunning blow. Now, I could flare that. And I will flare that, actually. Or will I? I could flare the stun, go for a stun myself. Yeah, I'm gonna flare it. I want my Crusader action to stun that uh, to stun that enemy Crusader. Very surprised by the guard on the Abomination. A little bit surprised. There's gonna be a flare to dodge! Dodge, little Grave Robber, dodge the flare! No, why don't you do it? Why does it always... Why do, why do bad things happen to good people? <laughs> I, I really wish I dodged the flare. I know it's unlikely, but it was it was a 30% chance of dodging it because I did have 40 dodge with the cloak and dagger. It gives you an extra 20 dodge while stealth. So I would have loved to dodge that. Just go, well, not lunge because he's in position too, but just go like big panic darts, bam, and a uh, big crit for like 10 or something. It would have been lovely. But yeah, now there's going to be a retribution. Oh, you know what's coming. You know what's coming. Come on, chop crit. I need a chop crit. Ah, 16 to 30. We roll for 25, which is pretty good, so I'm not going to complain about it. And right now, we are in a really weird spot here, because the Leper being in position 2 is weird. It is very, very weird. I think there's going to be a stun onto my Arbalest. I think that's what I would do if I were if I were Stem. Either that or another slam, which puts my... Uh, puts my Leper in a good position, so I don't really mind it all that much. I think this is gonna be a lunch turn. 11 to 18? Yes, it actually does enough damage, that's really good. It's not every day that you see lunch not being a complete disappointment. And the fact that it actually did 11 to 18 there and got the roll is awesome, absolutely awesome. So there's gonna be a heal right there, you know what happens after the heal. We go for a bullet crit, right, for the value? Nah, because sniper shot confirmed down to zero again. So, yeah, the Arbalist is doing 11 to 20, while, you know, always, and the Grave Robber is doing 11 to 18 with a lunge. 
How does that make sense? It doesn't really make that much sense, but oh well. I have a 50 of getting a death blow, or I have a 60 of getting a death blow. I'm gonna go for the 60. Why is it a 60? Well, we have plus 10 here, we have plus 25 here. Yes! Mining away in this Minecraft day. I'll mine this anyway. And there goes your little crusader. So, we still have 60s just like the Jester does. If we, if that was a lunge, it would have been an 80. And if it was a lunge with Shadow Fate, it would have been a 100% death blow chance. So this team is actually a little bit more reliable than the Jester actually getting death blows. Of course, you don't have the... Uh, you don't have the finale, but come on again, that's twice. But don't fret, it's not the end of the world. I can still drop a Bola here. I can drop Bola Holy Lands and I'll be fine. Uh, drop off my turret. Okay, it hurts for a bit. Wow, double knockback? You gotta be kidding me. Bola can't knock me back unless it's a crit, because I do have 90% move resistance. You know, the meme of the immovable leper is being really me me here. 90% um, move, move resistance, it's like the immovable leper, the leper that you cannot move. Under no circumstances can this leper ever be moved, and yeah, it's really not working out that way, is it? Uh, the Manorms is gonna have to guard again, unless he wants to, be, to eat a big chop crit to the face on that abomination, so I'm just gonna drop a Holy Lance here and be happy about myself. I'm gonna say Grave Robber Goliath comp is actually looking pretty nice because keep in mind you also have Panic Darts, right? So in case there is a lot of protection, you can only just Panic Darts your way through it, while the Jester is gonna have much, uh, much more of a worse time because he has to harvest and the uh, harvest can sometimes be a little bit of a troll. I could heal myself here, I could uh, chomp into the Mana which is suicide, or I could, um, I could uh, just take out the corpse. I think taking out the corpse is the play here. Wow, crit 46. Imagine you did that to the Crusader. <laughs> that would have been... Well, he did that to the Crusader. But imagine you did that to the Crusader while he was still alive. That would have been pretty funny, wouldn't it? Yeah. Uh, but it's okay. I do still have heals here. I have three healing characters with this team, which is nice. And my Leper is... Uh... Oh, that's a lot of damage. But my Leper is down at this store now. Um, I'm thinking I want to keep my Leper action to go for a big hit, but there's probably going to be Bola, and then after Bola there's uh, there's 70% protection and repost, so I think I'm just going to heal myself here, honestly. I think just the self-heal is smart, so I'm going to self-heal, and after that self-heal I'm going to Holy Lands, hopefully do enough damage, and then just get a death blow through lunch or something of the likes. So there's going to be a Bola here at does 6, which still isn't enough to just oof me, and I guess I'm not going to have that... Um, nasty holy lance anymore but it's not the end of the world because i still have this yes i do i do have that and i do make that arbalist go down to this store now if you want to save the arbalist you really have to guard her but if you guard the arbalist then i can either stun you which is very likely or i can go for something else i'm not dropping to this store just yet so i think this is a pretty clear launch turn right um, yeah, this is a pretty clear launch turn, so you can see death boat chance is an 80, and it whips, which is very annoying, very preoccupying, and now you might be wondering, Shep, are you going to go for the 40? Yes. Oh, that's bad. Oh, that's bad. Oh, that is horrible. <laughs> that is horrible that the Arbol still lives. How is she alive? She should be gone. How did she survive the 80? It's even more... Uh, it's even worse with this team when you actually fail the death blow because um, the leper goes out of position, right? And you don't even get finale buffs for it, so it's even worse. Uh, do I want the shadow fade? Mm, I mean, kind of. Um, I still want to drop a sniper shot on there. But yeah, I'm gonna shadow fade for now. So yeah, let's shadow fade back to position 3. And let's see what happens after that. So it's a good thing that you do always have this way of putting the Leper back into position. Unless it's a Crusader that's behind him. And yeah, even even then you the Grave Robber can still just go Shadow Fade. The Arbals can go Bola. So you have a pretty decent backline for repositioning this Leper. So that's good. Is he going to slam again? Is he actually going to slam again? He's thinking about it. Nah, he's going to go Rake. Okay. Does it do enough damage? No, it's not quite enough to take me out just yet, which is good. And right now, I'm gonna not really have too much good to do with the Crusader, so I'm gonna go for an interesting play. You'll see what I'm going for. I'm gonna go for a sniper shot on the Arbalest, and now we have a confirmed death blow against her. You cannot guard here. You cannot guard. I mean, you can, but it's not gonna work. And why isn't it gonna work? Well, look at this. When you have Cloak and Dagger, 
bypass card while stealth. Isn't that amazing? It is. It is really amazing. And what am I gonna do right now? Ship, no, you're going to the repulse. What are you doing? No, Ship, don't do it. You're gonna eat the repulse for a lot. I don't care. I, I still have a heal from the Crusader and I can kind of just wait this out. Now, I'm gonna say my damage was an absolute joke because uh, there's a lot of protection, but you know, you can kind of expect that. So yeah, I get to go for a heal right now and I don't get to go first, which is a little bit annoying, but I can only shoot the Arbals after she heals herself and I'll be fine. The Abomination can't stun me. Uh, the Abomination can go for a slam and try to disrupt me that way, but... Uh, and, and preventing the launch, but I can always just drop a Panic Dart if I want, and it's still a very decent chance of getting the Death Blow. It's still a... Uh, like an 18, I believe? Actually, it should be more because she suffered the Death Star already, right? So, do I really need to go lunge in this situation? Probably not. I could even get away with a sniper shot, not gonna lie. Oh, sniper shot pick to the face to bypass the protection? Hell yeah. Well, we don't get to 65. Ar Arbos, you should be dead ages ago. <laughs> not gonna lie, you should be dead ages ago. How is she alive? It's insane. I really want to get a, a big pick to the face on all of these characters because it, it completely ignores that protection. It would be awesome to see that happen, but yeah, I, I think not today. I'm gonna go for... Um, I'm gonna go for a heal with the Crusader here. Yeah, it's a little bit of a weird one, but I'm gonna go for a heal with the Crusader, just take it that way. I think he has to guard again, right? No, he can actually drop Retribution. Retribution, I'm not sure if it does 3 damage. I mean, it could, but I do have protection. I, I have the revenge on top, but the protection should reduce the damage enough. Nah, it doesn't. Wishful thinking, Shep. Well, you're gonna see my damage right now. It's 18 to 28, with a 23% crit chance. It's really good, right? And my death row chance is literally 100. Yeah, 100 with, uh, with panic darts. So I'm definitely gonna go for it this time around, right? I'm not gonna drop this. That would be very much of a troll play, so yeah, I'm, I'm just gonna do this, I'm gonna take her out. So she's finally gone, it took a while to take her out, so way longer than I wanted to, but no oh well. And I'm just gonna click here, and I'm gonna drop the slam and see, crit 44. No. I, I haven't gotten a crit absolution slash uh, solemnity heal in I don't know how many matches, it's it just... I, you ju it just gets to a point in the Butcher Circus where you don't get those heals anymore. <laughs> you don't get those crit self heals anymore. It's just it's really sad. It is really saddening. But yeah, the abomination here is uh, getting afflicted soon. More virtuous, that could happen. There is a taste of grandeur. But when you're outnumbered 4 to 2, it's not looking too good for you, I'm gonna say. So there's gonna be. Um, I think a heal here. I want to keep my Crusader heal. Yeah, I want to keep my Crusader heal. I'm gonna go for a heal onto this, uh, onto this Crusader, and I'm not sure if I want to drop a Panic Darts on the Man at Arms, or if I want to drop a Pick to the Face. I'll see how much damage I'm actually doing and then decide. So yeah, I'm not sure what my Leper here is gonna do. Um, how much damage do I do with a Pick to the Face? I should do like 10, right? Yeah, it's not very much. Well, the Leper is just gonna go for a chop, or... Oh, the damage is so bad. Oh, this is a little better. Let's go for it, let's go for the chop. We eat enough from the repast, which is sad. And now the Grave Robber can't really do very much. Or else she might die immediately to the Man Arms finisher, which... Uh, that sucks, obviously. I'm gonna heal here. It's gonna be very difficult to take these two characters out, not gonna lie. I think... Uh, I, I don't know what I want to do with her. Because if I do this, how much damage is this? Yeah, 10 to 15. It's there, it's there all right, but it's not very much. Mm. I'm thinking of just moving back and going Shadow Fate, believe it or not. Or actually just moving forward and then going Shadow Fate, yeah. I'm thinking of doing that. I think that might be a good play here. <laughs> I'm just gonna move forward voluntarily and then I'm gonna go Shadow Fate just to take out these two characters because they're, they're a tough nut to crack. Look at this duo. Oh, with that repost, it's gonna be rough. I could go for a stun. I should probably have been stunning this entire time, but yeah, I haven't been doing that. And the Abomination finally goes fearful, so he's probably gonna go for a stun himself here, but after that I have... Oh, I have Flare, but I have to heal. Yeah, I have Flare, but I do have to heal first, so I'm gonna heal here. And uh, I'm gonna have to spend a lot of time healing. Why is it so difficult to clutch out a match against, against this repost genius right here? 
it's going to be really difficult to, to take him out. I'm going to have to heal the Leper because there's going to be Retribution on him. Yeah, there it goes. It's a crit for 4 too. <laughs> it's getting me closer to Afflictions, but I doubt I'm going to get Afflicted. And now, of course, I can't even go for... Um, Oh, I can't even go for a flare because, you know, the leopard would just die. So I'm gonna do that. I'm gonna pass here. And do I take enough damage from the repast? Uh, probably. But I'm gonna go for it anyway. Yeah, I actually don't take enough, thankfully. And uh, just clutching out this match here is honestly fine. I think I'm gonna take the W anyway, even if the leopard dies at this point, as long as I do some decent damage with the MAA. He only had 40 prot this time around instead of 70. So I was pretty happy just doing that. Let's see, what does Stem want to do here? It's just, I think he's thinking of uh, dropping another retribution on the Leper, just to make him go down to zero, but uh, overall that's not gonna work. You know, I still have a lot of heals. I'm, I'm fine. I have permanent heals. I have infinite heals with Charlie to the Flame and uh, Battlefield Bandage. If this team that Stem had was actually able to take out one of my characters before, uh, uh, before I killed two of his, uh, he would have definitely been able to clutch something out here, but yeah, otherwise it's not so easy. I'm gonna drop a Shadow Fate just so I have a confirmed death blow by the start of next round, and I'm gonna go for some shenanigans, and then I'm gonna kill the Man at Arms, and then it's gonna be pretty easy to take out the Abomination. I think he might be thinking of Beast File, so Abomination might be one. Uh, might wanna go for that Beast File, you know, just hit my Grave Robber, cause stress, cause blight. I'm not sure what he wants to do. Could this team still win? I really don't think so. Not when I have a two character advantage. It is saddening to see. I'm not gonna, not gonna lie. It is a little sad. Actually, there's two repasts now. <laughs> Repasts well guarded. If I go Hugh, I might have a really hard time. But you know what? I'll let you have one of my characters if you want to do it. Uh, thankfully, it dodges, so there isn't even a death blow just yet. And uh, I will have pretty much a confirmed kill against that MAA by the start of next round. I'm still gonna go for a heal here. And uh, actually, am I? Am I gonna go for the heal or am I gonna go for the kill? I could go for the kill like this. Yeah, let's go for it. So we go for it. We get to stun finally at last. And uh, he isn't gonna keep his repast after his action. I'm just gonna go for a sniper shot here on the Abomination. If you want to take one of my characters and so be it, you get a little bit of prestige. I'm pretty sure Stem already has max prestige because this is one of the latest strengths you get. You get this at 69. A 69 prestige level, yeah. It is uh, the funny number. The, the funny value of the of the shield spike. I think it's not the last trinket you get, but it's almost the last trinket you get. I think the last one's Materia Passes. So yeah, you, you should have all the prestige at this point, I'd say. So what do you do here? Do you die or do you die against the, against the Grave Robber? Well, I think you chose the wrong die. It's now I can take out your Abomination with a confirmed chance, and your Man at Arms won't last too much longer, I don't think. I'm still gonna go for a chop here. Oh, my hit chance isn't confirmed. But uh, that's okay. I'm not going to heal. I think that would be a little bit trollish. I'm okay with letting him take a kill. I'm going to try killing him to fire. Oh, look, he did zero damage. Oh, no. Anyway, I'm going to just drop a... Uh, I don't know, let's Holy Lance the corpse. Maybe the Crusader goes like wide-eyed and hits position one, but unlucky. <laughs> unlucky, I suppose. Retribution, does it get the death blow? Yes, the 50-50, it actually goes through. Well, GG. And now the... Um, Pick to the face should be the kill. Yes, mining away. Good job, Grave Robber. You killed three characters. No, you killed all four. You killed all four. You mined the Crusader. You panic darts the Arbalist. You. What else did you do? You launched the Abomination and then you mined the Manor Arms. So, MVP Grave Robber. GG. So, anyway, hope you all enjoyed the matches. Hope you all enjoyed that. Epic Grave Robber, and try this team out, I actually like it a lot. Goliath Comp 3.0, it's gonna be its name. It's awesome, I like this Grave Robber. Uh, what's its downsides? Well, you have no accuracy buffs, so that that sucks. Um, you have no finale, that also sucks. You still don't have a Bounty Hunter for the finish him. I mean, you have a Grave Robber, which is almost as good, but it's, you know, it's not as good as a Bounty Hunter. So overall, decent team. I like the versatility it has. I like the Panic Darts. Uh, having that possibility of Panic Darts is really good. So, yeah. Anyway, hope you all enjoyed it, and I'll see you again another time. Cheers.